Hello, all you amazing humans out there. Happy Wednesday morning. I'm with my right hand man, Mr. Gwen. Um, we got an exciting one for you today. Uh, we're going to go over everything foil, bunch of questions, comments, Q and A's. Um, but first off, I just want to say happy, beautiful Wednesday. We love you guys. It's going to be an epic day for you guys all. Um, and then I just want to open up with congratulations to the man right across from me in that screen who landed his first backflip on a wing, which I'm super amped. I got to watch it. There was definitely a bunch of crashes beforehand, which were just as exciting to watch. Um, but I'm just amped because I look back on the day that I met this human right here, gave him all my gear. He went out there with Harry and Harry's like, man, I don't know who this guy is, but his knees are all bloody and he's trying to do this sport. Which and now he's doing backflips. Well, that's the crazy part is, you know, like when you gave me your gear to go try, um, you gave it, you gave it all to me and then you left. I had your gear. <laughs> Um, and then we had just met, I think like three hours prior to that. We had never met before we met, we did some filming three hours later, you have to go somewhere and you tell me, have you ever tried wing falling? And I'm like, no, but I, you know, I really would like to. And you're like, yeah, here we go. Take my gear and go try. And that's it. I have like a bunch of gear in, in, in the back of the van and, um, met up with Harry and that was like. That amazing day and like everybody knows like on on your first time wing falling i mean i came out of it you know bleeding from my knees <laughs> from my feet i actually still that was um that was like a year and a half ago and i still have like the top of my foot still has a scar from that day <laughs> um but and, and and it's funny because a few days ago there was a guy like with his feet like um tons of like uh, um like Band-aid, um, yeah. band-aid on his feet. Um, and, and he, he was like, yeah, yeah, I just, I'm learning how to wing for it. And I was like, that's, that's how it's, it is for everybody. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's an exciting process, but then, you know, like speaking to that specific thing of like, you know, like, you know, like finally, like, you know, like landing a backflip, which you know, it, it, it was not clean or anything, but is it, there is like, it, it's like still so far from, you know, I remember when I landed like the first flaca. it's still so far from being proficient at doing the flaca. And like, there is like so much work still. It's not win, it's like, a, you know, you didn't win. But the, the, the big thing is like, once you finally, you know, do something or like, you know, like get a taste of it, it's, it's, it makes a big difference into, you know, your, your own confidence, your own mind, being like, you know, I touched it. Like now it feels like it's, it's in reach. Um, where, where like the backflip at the very beginning feels like it's going to take me like 20 years to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, what it gives you is it gives you, it opens up more possibilities because it gives you that ability to be like, you know what? I, the, these things are achievable, right? Well, Versus and, and, and for the backflip, it's so scary. I feel like, um, <laughs> I feel I feel like from that that session, the last session we did, there was a huge um, kind of like weight lifted for a few reasons. Uh, and in one of the main thing is like I didn't bre break my wing at all, <laughs> which is huge because I used to like every time I would go and try, my wing would come out of it with like two or three like three foot tear, um, like all the way across. And that was always the way. And and for the first time, the last session, my wing came out intact. Even though there were some pretty intense crashes. Uh, I actually just posted one and people are commenting. Um, can't believe that the wing is still intact after a crash like that. Um, but that's part of it. And for everybody, like, you know, learning new tricks, you know, it's, it's the game. I actually, um, my foil, you know, like, broke my wing and, and, and the bladder a few, like a, a week ago, a couple of weeks ago. And it was nothing. I was riding a wave, fell, not anything intense. <laughs> and that happened. <laughs> so it's like, you just never know when, when it's going to happen. Um, but it, it does happen. The gear, you know, you know, whenever you try to improve or it's just part of the game. So 
Well, let's get into it. So first off, I just want to say everybody uh, who support us, who we see on the beach, who we cross paths with. Look, we just thank you guys. We love you guys. We're just trying to share a good message. We're trying to help people here. And what's amazing is you guys are all leaving comments that are helping others. And I truly can't say that more. And, um, you know, on that note, um, I kind of want to lead today with just a, a little message that that uh, my 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 father actually told me here recently. And if you don't have anything good to say, just don't say it at all. And it, what what did you tell your your dad for him to say that to you? <laughs> so, so it it's just one of those things. That it's not um, it's not anything negative from this saying. The reason why this saying is good is sometimes your loved ones. Um, your wife, your kids, your dear friends, you know, you may say something that's just like, you know, let's just say I do the dishes all the time or something and uh, my wife does it a different way or and, and and I could say, well, you know, she always puts that plate always in that same spot that like shouldn't be there. We'll say because it's I have a certain way now I'm just speculating. Right. But in reality, it's not really a big deal. It's not even worth saying. So, you know, we should just be grateful for the effort of the dishes or putting it away. It may not be exactly the way you do something. So this kind of sparked and it was something that I just wanted to relate to everybody is, you know, if you really don't have any good, anything good to say. It's just not worth saying anything at all, you know, because there's no reason to bring somebody down or maybe put a little negativity in there. If anything, just wait and, you know, just always share positivity, which is, you know, a message that I just want to share today um, with everybody out there. So that's it. Um, and uh, we can get going. So there's a um, message, uh, uh, a message from Kelly. Yeah. Kelly actually is talked, you know, today is the, the first time we are going live on YouTube and Facebook. And Kelly was saying, finally, I'm going to be able to, you know, watch the live because um, it, apparently you have to have like a a YouTube like channel or like a YouTube account if you want to be able to watch the, the live on YouTube. She doesn't. And um, so now she can watch the live. Hopefully we have more people joining on Facebook. And, um, you know, Kelly, if you, you know, if you don't know who she is, she's in a, quite a few of our videos. Uh, she's most famous for the, um, like the, the, the most common mistakes uh, video. Uh, that's what we use here for uh, most of the time. <laughs> Well, we were using Gwen, uh, but <laughs> no, I'm just quit, kidding. Um, uh, where can you take lessons? Look, message um, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, and message Kelly. <laughs> I would just say everybody out there that's interested in kite surfing, e foiling, wing foiling, anything foiling, look, just reach out to any shop out there. Look up water sports shops in your location. Type in foiling. Type in e foiling. Um, a lot of the big brands out there, you can go to their websites and find local dealers to take lessons or to be able to get gear. Uh, my honest opinion is just just start, just start reaching out, just start researching. Um, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised on how many people are willing to help you and give you uh, good information. If you see it on the beach, go talk to somebody. If you see somebody out there trying, just go talk to them. How do you get into this? How, how are you doing this? Um, and, and I think your life will change in such a wonderful way. And, um, yeah, that's, that's what I would say yeah. for, for getting then, into it. And then Kelly actually, like, she's like the perfect example because she has never done anything on the water. Um, you know, like she grew up in Idaho in the mountains, no, no time spent on the water, no surfing, no wind sport experience. And she started wing falling as her like first, uh, water sport. And, you know, a year later, she's up, you know, uh, falling both direction, driving. Um, so, and she actually like recently, uh, she just got a new foil, the 1200 high aspect uh, from Cabrina. And, and um, so she, we were in the water. She asked me like, can you ride my board to see if the foil is uh, the, in the right position? And I was riding on um, the autopilot 40 liters and the 800 high aspect foil. So I just... We switch burn, but I'm I'm like, you know, I, she's probably not going to be able to ride my burn. So I just tell her, like, you know, give me a second. I'm going to ride your burn. Two minutes later, I look back and she's up riding my burn. So, you know, like it just shows like you can do it. You you know, like she she actually didn't take lesson. I mean, she had like she had help from from us. Um, 
<laughs> but truly, like everything we told Kelly, like that's what we say in our videos, you know. So if if you if you watch our videos and if you put in the time, you can do it. Uh, yeah. So that's what's amazing about wing foiling is like, you know, n unlike uh, kite, kite surfing, kiteboarding, uh, where you know it's you you probably want to get lessons. Uh, wing falling, you can start on your own. And it's, it's the main thing I would say is make sure you have, you know, a big burn, a big foil, and then put in the time. That's the key thing is it's, and don't compare yourself to others. Some people learn faster. And if you are not there, it's not, there is no problem with you. It's just how the process is for you. It might take longer. Yeah. Uh, we we got a bunch of questions coming in. One is classic. I love this one. Um, are you guys scared of sharks <clears throat> when you're out there? And what's that rational kind of thinking? Here's what I would say. Um, am I scared of sharks? Uh, no, I think I'm probably more scared of people driving on the road and like running into me more than a shark. But I would say my thought process is uh, I'm doing something I love out there, one. So um, I feel like I'm just sharing the water with them. Uh, I would say if it's super murky out, or I'm riding right near an inlet where the water's flushing out and it's murky water, you know, maybe not the most ideal situations. Um, you know, actually, we just did a live with uh, Andrew English, who just crossed his channel, which is with great whites and stuff, which is a little bit different. Um, and he was in the water swimming with no wind for, for, for a long time. And obviously that was going through his mind. I think it's just one of those things, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen to anybody um, but, uh, you know, uh, just enjoy the sport and try to take some of those, uh, scary things out of your mind maybe. And, um, you know, I don't think they're out to hurt you by all means. If anything, uh, it would just be a unlucky accident in my opinion. Um, yeah, I feel like it's like, um, I mean, like recently I was, uh, I saw shark and I was like, oh shit, you know, like, I need, like, I, don't fall. And of course few seconds later I <laughs> fall. um and and but but it's like it's like when you drive you know like you you know you could get an accident but you are not driving the entire time like oh you know i could be i could have an accident i could have an accident it's like you know the possibility is there and you know it's you know, um it can be dangerous but you you live with it and and so to me that's how i feel i'm in the water i see a shark i know it's a possibility um and uh but but you know like driving it's a possibility to have an accident you still do it and you live with it we live you live with the risk and that's um that's kind of how it is i, I would end with this katie uh the best uh, advice i think i won't say who told me this but uh just go out with a lot more wingers and your 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 chances <laughs> your chances are a little bit higher um, <laughs> um uh, on that note, uh, another question came in. The new Dekine wing harness, we just released a video about the new Dekine wing harnesses. Um, is it only good for really advanced wingers? Um, is it beneficial to beginners too? Uh, great question, Kelly. I would say 100%. Um, I think um, when you're first learning, you know, maybe your wing handling isn't quite as good. So, you know, you, not saying you couldn't use a harness. Um but if you're kind of riding back and forth, I would say, and maybe you can't jibe or you can't tack, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a harness because a harness is just going to give you the ability to hook in and take a little relaxing kind of pressure off your arms. Um, I would say to everybody out there, if you've never tried one, it's worth giving it a shot. The new Dekine ones have, uh, we have a bunch of questions that came in on those, but um, why do, why do they not have a spreader bar and why does it have this little hook that like folds to the side? And that main question or reason behind that is with a normal spreader bar, like kite surfing or windsurfing, when you climb on your wingboard or you're using your wingboard, your spreader bar may puncture the board or go into the board because it's just a solid fixed subject. If you fall on versus this little plastic hook that the Dekine makes on both the harnesses will fold to the side, but also be able to hook. It's, it's super brilliant. It works great. Um, but I would say, uh, I don't, I wouldn't say, uh, harnesses are not, uh, they're not great for beginners. I would say, uh, yeah, you could start with it for sure. And once you're kind of a little bit efficient going back and forth, I think then, then it will come into play where you may love it. Uh, 100%. That's yeah. Something I found, um, which we, we haven't shared in, in the video we just made, 
but the the length of your harness line uh, really matters and i feel like maybe people tend to have it shorter which actually is tricky to ride what i found was like if you put the palm of your hand on the strut the the your your harness line should be able to go and and it's about like um your your elbow um that's where like it should stretch to if you can't put your palm and uh, have the the harness line go under your elbow uh, I think that would be too short. Uh, that's kind of like the setting that I, I I found was pretty good. And then something that people mentioned when we posted that video, which we are not used to, we ride in Florida, um, but people were like, you know, when it's cold, if you ride in cold condition, when you, you wear gloves, um, a harness is pretty much necessary. And I could see how, because when you ride with thick gloves, uh, your grip is not as uh, strong. And then with the cord, um, like it, it, it will make your hand, it, it, for reason. it will make your hand colder. So like they were saying, like, if you ride in cold condition, you have to have a harness. And that's a good point uh, that we didn't, you know, talk about. Um, but yeah, for, for everybody out there that doesn't get um, summer all year round, then yeah, you might need a, a harness in the winter. And Brandon, uh, a message came in. <clears throat> uh, would you recommend getting started on a calm lake, fluky wind, or open ocean or bay with clean wind um, for wing foiling or kite surfing? I would say 100%, no matter what, you know, steadier winds are going to make your life easier um, when it comes to any wind powered sport. But like when said, I would just start. That's it. Just uh, go to a lake, go to an intercoastal, go to anything. Most important, I would say, is onshore winds are going to be the most challenging because you're just going to get pushed up onto the shore. Um, so side shore um, is always helpful. It just makes it easier because you're going to be going downwind in the beginning. But um, I think fluky winds are fine. It's, it makes it more challenging. That's why you want the bigger floatier board. Um, but don't be afraid to spend some time with these wings on land first. That's like super key. Just play with the wing. Get really good with the wing before you jump on a board. And, you know, it'll just it enhance your uh, kind of learning process and make it faster, in my opinion. Yeah, um, and and like um, one of like um, so if you ride it, if you are in an area where there is um, other riders, then you know learn from them, go talk to them, see when they go out, and because um, one common mistake as a beginner, you saying like, okay, you know, I want flat water and it to be smooth. But often that means there is no wind. So then you go out and, uh, and, you know, there is wind, but there's just not enough wind. And light wind is very hard for beginners. So, yes, you want, you know, as flat as possible. But if it's too light, it's not going to be helpful. Um, you, you are actually going to struggle and, and you won't understand why you can't get up on foil. You're going to think it's ha really hard to get up on foil. It is in light wind. And so... Um, I would say if you have like maybe even like a, a wind um, a wind meter or like a way to read uh, the wing uh, how strong the wind is, I would say 15 miles per hour, 15 to 20 miles per hour is kind of like the perfect zone to learn. Lighter than that, it gets tricky. Uh, windier than that, it can get you know tricky as well just because the water is gonna start getting more choppy. Yep. Um, but that would be, that would be your target. And remember if it's super looking really good out there, looking super smooth, it might be because it's too light wind or it's offshore and then also not good. Um, some other points that came up, uh, that we just love everybody's feedback. Please leave your comments in here on inflatable boards. Um, we'd love to hear everybody's opinion on inflatable boards. A lot of people talk about them. A lot of people ask us questions. Um, we, we message what we, what we know and what, what we've kind of gotten relayed back, but we'd love to hear more input on inflatable boards. That's a big question that kind of comes up a ton. Um, another big, uh, foil movement that's kind of happening right now with, with a lot of the top foilers. Now this isn't necessarily for beginners, but this is for more advanced foilers is, um, the fuselages or the tail wings. Um, like for instance, Lyft just launched this new wing, a, a 90, but they've launched some tail wings that the fuselage is shorter. And when you, in, when you take your front wing here and your back wing here and you make it tighter like this, 
it when you make a turn or you do anything it just it, it's literally you can make it even tighter even sharper even more aggressive and 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 truthfully this is kind of a genre of you know the guys in hawaii and the people that are kind of pioneering pioneering a lot of this uh, surf foiling and and people are going shorter and shorter on fuselage because you're I would say you're carving or you're turning the longer you go, the longer your fuselage, the more stable it kind of becomes. Um, so that's just something to know. Like if you're buying a foil, your fringe buying a foil and, and his front wings here and his back wings right here, it's going to be a very uh, challenging uh, item to ride. Um, but I would say that's kind of like a future thing that's happening right now. Uh, people are making adjustments to have their fuselage a little bit closer. Tail wings are getting smaller because, that means less drag, more performance, but that's not necessarily for a beginner. But we just thought we'd bring that up because um, uh, a lot of companies are kind of trying trying to play with that. And and I think uh, the advanced riders, surfers, uh, prone foilers, um, I would say, you know, w whenever you have wind power, like a wing or a kite, I would say it's a little less irrelevant because you have power in your wing or power in your kite. You can still make the same carves, but you also have power so you can generate or make things turn differently because you you can lock into power. So um, I would say this this emphasizes a lot in toe foiling, surf foiling, SUP foiling, where you're just kind of riding something. Yeah, to me, like what's very exciting about this is, <clears throat> you know, it's it's a very small piece of equipment and often it will be fairly cheap um, and it makes your foil totally different. So you don't have to like, you know, with the same setup, the same front wing, the same tail, all you got is a shorter fuselage. Um, it will make a huge difference. So that, yeah, to me, like, that's why it's, it's going to be very exciting because you don't need to like invest quite a bit of money again to like have a different setup with just that short piece that w should be you know fairly cheap in in uh compared compared to like the the rest of the foil um you will be able to have something that's like a lot more advanced um and yeah so i think that's that's very exciting i've been i've been uh trying a short tail uh on the 800 you know high aspect uh foil Is from that how you did your backflip <laughs> No, no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> James had an amazing question. James, thank you so much for the kind words and also um, a, a very good question. These foils nowadays come very sharp. Um, Takuma, he said, for example, what are your some thoughts on sanding these down? Um, here's my personal opinion. If I was racing, when we raced foils, kiting on hydrofoils and so on, um, they were super sharp, uh, the trailing edge, because the release is faster. Um, it's it's the it's the most performance you can get. Now, I don't think they need to be razor sharp uh, just for normal daily life riding at all. I would say when you start to sand them, the most important thing is, you know, check with the company that you have to make sure that if you do sand it, are you going too far into, you know, potentially making it delam. But if, it, if, if, if you have a really sharp raggedy edge, you can definitely kind of buff it off so it's not as sharp. I, I personally don't think it's going to ruin um, – if I was racing or incredible high performance, I would say, yes, it definitely changes it. Uh, sandpaper alone, you can take a foil, and, and this is things we did in racing, but you could take 600 grit and you could put 1,200 grit and you sand your foil. And I'm telling you, it changes that foil – incredible amount so yes sanding does change it but i would say uh trailing edges or leading edges or even your mast um i have no problem with dulling them down uh, just to keep it a little bit safer um so in my opinion i don't think it hurts it i would just double check with the company to just make sure that you don't kind of take too much off and have uh maybe the mast delam or the wing delam but uh usually you can kind of dull them down um with just a little bit of sandpaper uh that's just my thoughts yeah i mean for sure um they don't need to be sharp so like i, I don't think you will actually notice any difference like yeah most people i don't think would honestly no. unless yeah. if you're looking at performance it's a it, performance for sure can change it but i would say for normal everyday use i i don't i don't think there's a negative to it uh i mean some of the some of the top riders that i know out there right now they 100 sand their foils uh, more for just safety of like picking it up um or crashing um yeah, yeah. 
another question came in. Uh, I own a five foot eight, 120 liter fanatic air inflatable board and she loves it or he loves it. I think she loves it. Um, uh, I learned on a six foot, uh, 45 liter. Um, well, that's yeah, great. Basically it's just, um, yeah. to, to say about the inflatable board, yeah. um, uh, the county winger loves his inflatable burn mm -hmm. uh five eight hundred twenty liters fanatic sky air yeah yeah i mean you know we we've we've said it before like um the 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 advantage of like um the the inflatable burn is like you can travel with with it uh but but in my experience the people i've seen using uh, inflatable burn uh they end up keeping it inflated all the time because it's annoying to inflate. And, um, so yeah, you, you might be, um, the, the appealing factor might be like, Oh, I have a small car. I can deflate it all the time. But what might happen is like, it's very annoying to have another piece of equipment that you need to inflate. So you leave it inflated. So then at this point you you might as well get, um, a normal, you know, a normal burn. Uh, but you know, I mean, it's, it's, a lot of like personal preference so yeah if you if you i would say try it and if you like it better i mean it, it might be also safer when you fall on it you don't ding it so it has also advantages um as well yeah some some other disadvantage or advantages of a of a inflatable board is a lot of times they can't get them super sharp like the rails super sharp because it's inflated and whenever you have really round rails on anything the water will wrap and want to stick to it so sometimes it doesn't want to release off the water as easy um, and then the other uh, maybe setback on some of them maybe is if you can't get it firm enough, it kind of has a little bounce to it. So actually when you're just doing anything or it's hitting the chop, it's even more bouncy. Um, these are just some feedbacks that have come across, but uh, I think Gwen nailed it. And that is just give one a go if you can or try to demo one. Um, another awesome question, uh, Brandon just chimed in. Is SUP foiling the recommended way to start wing foiling and then advance to a smaller traditional board? I would say the recommended if you've never foiled before, I would say uh, I would say e-foil, I would say is one of the safest ways to learn. I would say if your buddy has a maybe a jet ski or a boat and you go super duper slow behind a boat and you kind of learn how to get up on a foil, these are all good ways to learn. But if you have a... a call it a sup and you can stick a foil on it um there is no reason why you shouldn't get a wing and give it a go 100 percent um yeah there's a lot not, of people learning that way but not take your sup and foil and go in waves to learn foiling that would be i think incredibly hard or like harder than it has to be um yep. just yep. i mean anything in waves foiling in waves is hard is hard and, <laughs> and so that's not the way we recommend that you go learn before you go wing falling i think yeah. wing falling would be easier than learning uh, i would say sup waves. standing on a board with a foil will be easier than call it prone surfing to learn how to foil but i would still say i agree with gwen it, it is tricky because the energy of a wave or the energy of anything is is still unpredictable on a foil when you're first learning it's hard to know what's going to happen so ideally, we recommend e-foil or behind a jet ski or boat um, as a great way to kind of just get your feet wet with with uh, foiling in general. Um, yeah. Yeah. Another um, comment about uh, Richard loving his inflatable burn. He recommends it. Um, 140 liters, 6.6. Six, six, um, the F1 awesome. the yeah. rocket. And the kids yeah. can use it. Beautiful. Yeah. So, um, it, look, a lot of, a lot of good positivity on inflatable boards. So, you know, that's a good thing out there. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Any, anything, I mean, truly like, you know, anything that gets you on the water and gets you like that, yeah, you're on the you water, have a, have a good time. <laughs> it's perfect. perfect. Uh, like I, I definitely wouldn't stress over like what, piece of equipment to get if you are out there having fun that's that's the way to go another question we get a ton and that is um wing sizes right everybody when you're first getting into it what, what's the first wing i should buy i would just say look this is a simplified version of that answer it's not the perfect answer but i think Gwen kind of tapped it before but if it's like 15 to 20 miles per hour 
or your conditions are, you know, let's just call it lighter than 20 miles an hour. Um, and again, we say 15 to 20 because it's, it's pretty hard to learn winging under 15. It's very, very tricky. It's light winds. It's, it's, it's very hard. So we'll just say 15 to 20. We would say larger wings. Those are larger wings. Those are, you know, sixes to eights, uh, large wings. Um, that would be your light wind setup. And truthfully, those call it six meter sizes could go all the way up to, you know, 25, not necessarily it's recommended to be even higher than that, but um, you know, you can kind of hang on to them in some higher winds. And then obviously when the wind gets windier, that's when the smaller sizes come into play significantly. Um, so if you live in a really windy place and it's 30 or whatever, you know, that's when you're going to be on the smaller wings. But I would say in, in, you know, what, what we see in the United States a lot, um, in intercoastals and lakes and oceans is, is, you know, unless if you're in Hawaii or the gorge or some places in California, maybe, it's not always that windy. So the bigger sizes, five, sixes, all the way up to eight are definitely uh, the most popular. And I, I think you'll end up with more wings technically to cover different wind ranges because you're going to fall in love with it like everybody does. And it's just booming right now because your kids can do it. Your wife can do it. Everybody can play with it. And it's just one of those things that I just, I emphasize everybody out there. It clears your brain. It takes stress away. It's, it's a new challenge. It's, it's relatively safe. It's very hard to learn. We'll just say that I have no problem with saying it's hard to learn, but it's a fun challenge to learn. And if you have any questions, you should text Harry, the legend and text Gwen here and ask him for any help. <laughs> and then That's all I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then remember, like, um, again, if they are already people on the water, you know, go talk to them and they might be able to tell you for that, you know, spot, like, you know, this is the, 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 the most, we, like most of days we get this kind of win. So that's the wing you should get. There is a lot of knowledge to get from local riders. Um, and then also remember as a beginner, you will often end up riding a bigger wing than everybody else because um, you are not efficient, uh, so you need more power. You are not going to be pumping when everybody is like able to pump and get up on foil. What you want is you want a big wing that's uh, allowing you to just pull, you know, shit in and then have enough power to get going. Uh, so as a beginner, you will have to ride maybe one size bigger than most people on the water. And so, yeah, I would say five and six is is probably the easiest in my opinion when you get above six as a beginner it might be tricky to handle as well um, you know like depending on like your size um you know for for like uh somebody that's like five eight or shorter than that holding eight meter is can be like um pretty tricky uh so six five to six to me is like ideal for learning yeah. And we, and we released some recent videos that everybody should check out, um, you know, as winter and a lot of the country is, is slowly, you know, coming to an end. I would just say, you know, going out on the ice or going out on the snow, uh, Ken Lucas just put out a video ripping on his, uh, I think crosswing and in the snow, probably in, in, in Mount hood. But I would just say, man, there's nothing wrong with taking a skateboard or taking, a ice skates or skis and, and, and taking a wing and just playing with it and learning the concept. It will 100% help you for when you transition to the water, not to mention you'll have the time of your life ripping around on a skateboard or, um, on the ice. And I just think sometimes, uh, people just, you know, think I just have to do the full setup. And I, I always just say, get a wing, just get a wing. I mean, I know families that have the wings and their kids just jump off the dunes with the wings. That's yeah, it. Yeah. That's all they do. They don't even wing. <laughs> they just play with the wings. Yeah. And uh, they're having fun. And that's what life's about. So that's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. One, one, uh, one like recent comment we got. Um, and we, we have a video on like, you know, kiting versus winging. And, and somebody was like commenting. I think it might have been like sarcastic, but it was like, so should I sell all my kite gear to start <laughs> winging? <laughs> what we say always, you know, is like, we know we love both and both sports are great. It's, there is no competition. If you are having so much fun kiting and you don't feel like winging, you know, you don't need winging. Great. You are out there kiting. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, so we are not like 
pushing, winging, and trying to end kiting. That's not our goal. We we still do both, and we still love both sports. Um, and uh, so, our, our basically you like in, kite went <laughs> sometime. <laughs> <laughs> but our philosophy is, you know, if you are there and you are on the water having fun, that's that's the goal. So we just see like winging as like this fresh opportunity to bring more people to bring to bring more again like more joy some excitement again uh if you have been cutting for a long time so so that's that's what we see we don't yeah we are not trying to like compare really like you know winging is better than cutting or whatever um just go out there and and have fun and that that is the goal and look if you're on the fence uh, um Share this with your friends. Like, honestly, Gwen and I are literally doing this to motivate people and hopefully give people, kick them over the edge to have a better life or or maybe share some messages. In a lot of our videos, we go over, you know, uh, some incredible humans that share stories on, you know, surgeries, cancers, depression, uh, challenges, overcoming, you know, uh, things in life. We all go through it. So I, I just think, you know, if there's anything we can do to help people or share a message or, you know, uh, let us know because, uh, the goal for this whole channel is to bring everybody together, uh, have a community where people can, can speak and be vocal and help others and, and learn and enjoy this awesome water sport. And, and, and when I say water sport, because yeah, we speak a lot about wing foiling cause it's a lot of fun, but technically foiling in general is just exploding kite surfing is still one of the coolest things on the planet and i recommend anybody giving it a shot but more importantly the doing something that takes your you know your life to a, a more positive um influence on others because if you're negative or you're not happy with your life you you it'll just shine on everybody so if you can put yourself in something that maybe makes you happy like wing foiling or foiling or whatever it may be maybe it's going to library, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a little bit of positive in your life, hopefully that keeps all those negative um, kind of creepers that come into your brain and, and try to bring you down. That's, that's what life is. So we just, you know, that's, that's why we do this. We want to make sure that we can share a message to people and, and hopefully motivate them to, you know, look, we love you guys. Give somebody a hug today. I mean, we don't really do that anymore. Maybe COVID, it's a little bit different. Um, but um, I don't know, maybe like a fist bump or something. I mean, and, and, and uh, you know, we want to show that like, you know, wing foiling, like for, for people that don't know anything about it and then they just see it for the first time, it might look um, very, very hard. Um, it might look, um, they might, like people, when they see it for the first time, they might think they can't, they cannot yeah. do it. Intimidating. And so... We know we want to show like that's that's not true, you know. Like we have plenty of examples of people that ages, yeah. that have been able to do it. And yes, it is hard, and we you know we are we are never gonna say it's easy. But um, but the truth is anybody can do it. And and so if you are looking at it thinking like wow, like you know, like I wish I, I would be able to do this. We are here to say you, you can, can you can do it. I mean, and... technically, not not everybody. No, I'm just kidding. That, see, that's right there. Boom. See, <laughs> you don't have anything good to Maybe say. You, yeah, exactly. Don't say it at all. <laughs> that's what I want to put out right there. That's that. Just that's what can happen. Wait, where's the like banner? That. Like that's the time to oh, put it up. On. Sorry. <laughs> um, there it is. I just want to prove that. That's why I started this message today with this because I just feel like every once in a while we just we and I'm 100% guilty of every once in a while you can just throw that one little thing that just doesn't need to be said just don't well, say it and and don't don't judge people by you know thinking oh you know like that person for sure they cannot do that don't judge people because you never know what they can do <laughs> and, and remember usually the most quiet people are actually the smartest people which scares <laughs> me <laughs> um all right so as we wind this, as we wind this thing down, look, we want to wish everybody a wonderful Wednesday. We're gonna shoot over to our patron only on YouTube and join all our amazing friends and family there. 
Um, we thank everybody for the support. Look, leave your comments, leave anything that we can, you know, make videos in the future, um, help you with, um, let us know. We'll, we'll get back to as, as best as we can. Um, and on that note, we always want to leave on an incredible message. So Gwen, you want to lead this one off? What, what a great message, Mr. Yeah, Backflip. I mean, Are we going to call you Mr. Backflip now? <laughs> well, I would just say, you know, <laughs> share you know, always share like the, the positivity, you know, like if something in you, if you find something out in your life, whether it's like, you know, you read a book that changed your life, you start doing something that changed your life, uh, make sure to share it with people. And that's, you know, that's what we are doing. We, we, we got into winging. It, it, it's, it's life changing. It's bringing happiness. And so we want to share it. So always um, try to like keep that in mind um and 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 you know you uh being willing to help and putting out there might be a game changer for somebody and it, you don't have to change a thousand people you know that's not you know if you change one person and that 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 is like just like incredible so um do that just like you like find what works for you and then help people it might not work for other people but it might work for one person and that would be amazing. I would say to end on that would be give to give. Don't give to receive. A lot of times people give because they're like, well, maybe I'm going to get something back from this. Give because you want to give. Just share. Just share. If, if, if I, I mean, I don't know how many times we're at the beach and you see somebody struggling, you just try to help. That's it. It's like I don't want anything in return. Just I mean, what I love yeah. actually is like, it's, it's, you know, give because, you know, also like you, you received before, you know, like we, if we think about like, you know, like our like journey through life, you know, I'm pretty sure at some point somebody helped you. And so it, it, it doesn't have to be like, um, you give back to that person, you know, that person helped you. And now it's your turn, your time to like. Uh, your turn to help somebody. Uh, so, I mean, for me, like, you know, like I met Damien and and that, that you know, like brought incredible opportunities for me. And I'm excited to like be able to like pr do that to somebody else. And, 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 you know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, Damien uh, open opportunities for me and then I open opportunities for Damien. Like it's, somebody's going to open opportunities or somebody did op open opportunities for you, Damien, you know, it's like, yeah, it's 100%. not like a, a, a yeah. two way um, type of uh, interaction. It's like you help somebody, somebody help you, somebody will help you. And so just be there for somebody. Don't expect that you will get return something in return from them. You will yeah. from somebody else. If you give with, un with, with unconditional love and you give it because it's the kindness of your heart, I promise you, I just from experience, it comes back. Now, how that comes back in life, exactly. you'll never it know, it but it matter. comes back yeah. 100%. And it doesn't matter because what you need to know is just give because you want to give. And if that's you, it's it's you sharing the best gesture you can in this world right now. There's nothing wrong with that. And you cannot be sort of punished for that. So you know, there's no bad thing in trying to help somebody or there's no bad thing in giving. So that's all we want to say. Um, on that note, we hope to share everybody. Uh, hopefully we share time on the water with everybody. Um, hopefully we can see you out there one day. Hopefully um, Gwen and I can put together an event where we can have everybody come down and it'll be the biggest foiling event ever and we get to see everybody's face. But on that note, look, everybody have a wonderful Wednesday. We're going to shoot over to our patrons. Um, for five dollars a month uh it's literally a coffee to support the channel and keep this thing going um this is not our full-time job by all means we just do this because we love everybody and um we're gonna shoot over to the youtube uh private patron chat and um that's it have a wonderful week um until next week and uh thank you guys all so much and that's yeah. it thank you guys we uh, it's pretty exciting like we have had uh, quite a few um comments coming from facebook so i think uh i think we will be back on facebook every week now on youtube and facebook <laughs> we just learned how to do that so <laughs> yeah. we're, we're a little behind the it's curve a, it's all it's, i had to do it's was a link process. Them. 
and and to me like that it, it just that's how we work we, just we do started. things we're learning we do things it's never perfect and we improve it along the way on that note see you guys next week on facebook and youtube i love this comment sorry i have to i have to repeat it i think it's brilliant cast your bread upon the water and it comes back buttered <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.